muy bien. Here's to good friends. Cheers. 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 Hmm. That is sort of an oaky afterbirth. Mm. What was that? She did tell me to uh, get a beer and some cheese fries over at Eskimo Joe's. That's very nice, lovely. I only hope you feel this way when I'm done. Because I could destroy this night in two seconds. Why is that funny? <laughs> Well, I think it's a bit funny to be trying to define nothing. <laughs> Smooth as a bourbon on a summer day. I'm not getting a notification. Strong as a peated scotch in the winter night. This is a fair warning. The Catholic Man Show is about to begin. Slap some bacon on a biscuit and let's go. We're burning daylight. <laughs> Welcome to the Catholic Man Show. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side. So raise your glass. Adam Minahan here, sitting in studio with the David Niles. Yo, how's how's it looking? How's the studio looking? I think it looks pretty good with me in it. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah. It's coming together. I think it looks. We're, good. we're getting we're getting really close to the final product. Yeah. If you are catching us on uh, Facebook or YouTube later on, the video quality is better. Yeah. Which, Check out our cameras. Which may not be good for us because we look best slightly blurry. Just a little bit out of focus. Just a little, little out of focus. Just a little, little bit. A little bit out of focus. But, you know, now we can actually do that if we wanted to. If we really wanted to, we could do that now. If we wanted to our do that. Our cameras can do that. We could totally do that. That would be nice. You want, you want me to do that? Not I, right now. I could totally do that. Maybe in a little bit. Okay. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hallelujah. He is risen. Truly, are, he is risen. We are Easter people. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah, it, especially, too. Especially because with Excess 90 ending right during Easter, it just made Easter that oh, much yeah, more delicious. It, no kidding. It was just like, I was ready. Mm -hmm. it, on so many aspects, I was ready. I wanted to, I was going to ask you about, about Exodus 90, but let's uh, pour a drink. Okay. So, to, so tonight... There's no way to talk about Exodus 90 without pouring a drink other, uh, over, other than over a glass of whiskey. Yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic about our drink tonight. I'm a little hesitant. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a Lafroy. I, I know what you mean, right? Because it's a Lafroy. It's a Lafroy. Uh, it's a it's their 2019. Excitement so levels are we've high. Been, we've been saying Caridos. That's totally wrong, by the way. Oh, I said that because that's what you said. Oh well, it's wrong. Okay. Um. Uh. Carches. Carches is, is is how it's pronounced. Sure, of course it is. Naturally. Because that's why the D is there. Right. Um, and that's why it's spelled like Caridas. Right. Or Caradius. Right. Carches. But, Carches. Uh, that's how you pronounce it. So, every year... Okay. Right. So, every year, uh, they they bring out... You know, the, in Gaelic, it means friends. Friendship. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, every year, there's a thing called uh, Friends of Lefroig... If you buy a, a, a bottle of Laphroaig, you get a little coupon that you can buy. You can actually have like a square foot on Laphroaig's distillery. Yeah, and they yeah, call I've it. Got, you, I've got one. I so do I. Yes. Um. Hopefully, when we go to Scotland next yeah. year, I we'll get gonna, to stand on our little square yeah, foot of I'm land. I'm going to present my contract and say you you are to present me with boots and an umbrella and a and a Glencairn glass of scotch. Yeah, and. I I want to see my square foot. Yes. I want so, to make sure it's cultivated. And it looks pretty. That, looks, I, I, that there is some nice, beautiful peat moss. Do, does peat moss flower? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't so, think it does either. This is the 2019 uh, Carches. It is the triple you, wood. You, you, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, skimping, probably, skimping. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is Easter. I'm sorry. <laughs> um it, it it's the triple wood so is what they came out with this year and it's very high it's cask strength it's it's wow. bottled at 59.5 percent abv okay okay uh so it is going to be strong but it's matured in ex bourbon barrels qu quarter casks and then finished in european oak barrels wait wait did you say 59 percent yes 59 almost 60 percent okay 
Gotcha. Almost 60%. Uh, matured in X bourbon so barrels. Like we're approaching 120 proof. You are, you keep interrupting me. I'm public speaking. Stop public I'm interrupting trying, me. I'm just trying to like make sure that. <laughs> yes. That, you know, I've got my base established yes. here. Right. Okay. So X bourbon barrels, quarter casks and European oak barrels that were in Oloroso sherry casks. Okay. So I'm a little nervous because, you know, I like my Laphroaig's. Peaty, you know, kind of punchy, right in the mouth. Right. And this has got a sherry cask. And it has sherry casks in it. And it's not uh, labeled on the date it's a, or a age. Uh, you know, but. So they don't make an age statement. They don't make an age statement. I like my. Typically, that means that. Because, you know, the age statement is always the youngest whiskey. So right. it's, it probably has a, a very young whiskey thrown in there. And if you're using um, quarter casks. It's going to be strong. It's going to be well. You know, you can pungent. a quarter cask is going to age whiskey faster Quicker. than a regular barrel, just because the wood to liquid ratio is higher. Right. Well, let, let's try it. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. Cheers to Jesus. Cheers. Hallelujah. Cheers, Juan. So that it says that it's a creamy flavors of vanilla and fruit with a, a suggestion of sherry sweetness, perfectly complement Lafroig's signature peatiness. Uh, it's buried, fi- uh, bear filtered only and bought only. Bear filtered? Bear, 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 B A R R I E R. Bearer. Mm hmm. Filtered only and. I don't know what that means. And bottled with natural str- uh, cast strength. We recommend that you add. Listen to this. This is weird. We recommend that you add twice as much water as whiskey to fully appreciate the characteristics of whiskey at cast strength. So they're saying. Two parts so it's w- not going to be anywhere close to cask strength. It won't even right. be close to regular so I bottle think, strength. I think it's weird to to suggest that. Yeah, on the bottle, like why didn't why are you selling it to me like this then? Right. So on the nose, there is a little bit of the 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 peatiness, but it's not the, as medicinal as mm-hmm. what uh, Lafroig tin. But has. it does smell like Lafroig. It does have that Lafroig yeah, smell. Yeah, but it has a lot more sweetness to it. Yeah, it does. Uh, on the fr- it's not pungent on the nose. No, especially with, with it being a cask strength, you would think it has a it would have a very alcohol mm-hmm. punch to it, and it kind of does. It on, does on the palate when you when you take a sip. It is not nearly as peaty as Lafroig Ten. See, that was my worry is yeah. because with these different barrels, it's going to change the color. You can see that it's a dark amber color. the The color of it looks like what was the? It was it amber that was the mosquito was stuck in Jurassic Park rock. Uh, yeah. Was it amber? Uh, yeah. That's the color of of this. Whiskey. <laughs> that's so funny you say that because that's what I think of a lot of times when I drink whiskey. Is, I think of that scene, and he's he holding hold, he he's holding, holding like up. that little rock on the top of his staff. Or right, his cane his thing cane. he walks around right. with. Yeah, like it's like, ooh, it's just it's just the color of that that mosquito rock from <laughs> from Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. This so just like that movie. Uh, on the palette, what I haven't tried it on the palette. What is that a long finish? It is a long finish. Uh, it could partly be just the the alcohol. Uh, I brought water up so residue, that way you can, you know, you can like try it, it with water as well. Okay. Uh, but on the on the nose, I do get like almost a chocolate. Yeah, there's there's uh, chocolate on the palate too, quite a bit. Of there's a, like um, almost like a barbecue barbecue spice to it. Are you gonna are you gonna actually do that? Nice. I hope you make it. Nice. Boom. <laughs> do you see that? Those were right down the gut. Wow. It does kind of take your breath wow. away. I mean, it's strong. That first sip. Wow. Yeah, it is. The you know the It catches you. Subsequent sips don't hit you quite so hard. But it, you know, it's 120 proof. It is strong. It's strong. It's it's really and it lasts. It's surprisingly smooth for how strong it is. It's not the strong the smoothest whiskey you're going to drink cuz Mm-mm. It is that strong, and, but like when you said it's a long finish, it's like, well, I can't tell if it's the alcohol burn that's if that's what's hanging with me, or if it's actually the flavor of you know like the a flavor is still there. It is good. It is it is still there. So it's not as uh, punchy as a Lafroig tin. If if you like the mm. punchy in your mouth, like like wow, uh, try it with some water. 
you're not you're it's not gonna it's not gonna hit but here allow me to add five drops of water okay that uh, i'll allow it el, i mean the, i el, mean i mean they Juan. said to add two parts water one part whiskey yeah so and that's just i'm just not gonna do that a... because i i like to drink whiskey right um i don't enjoy I'm a, I'm a man right so two per two parts water that's what it says that is ridiculous where does it say that that is uh, that is a really good it's it's right here oh it's that, on the that's that is really good the water does open up the flavor it takes off a little bit of the bite but still even on the even on the uh palate it's 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 a strong oak but it's almost more of the what? not it's not like the iodine peatiness that you get or the medicinal peatiness no, that you get in no, a Lafroy uh -uh. tin. It's more of a, a Ardbeg type of peatiness in my... Yeah, uh, where the peatiness is... is Ardbeg is definitely peaty. But theirs is the peat is muted, and with Ardbeg, you get more of the iodine. Mm -hmm. you, I think you're right, the peat level. I don't really get a lot of iodine in, in here, but the peat level is definitely... It, Less. It is but a, you know the Lafroig Ten. That's the peatiest one that they got, right? Because it's uh, as it seems like as the Lafroigs age longer, the peatiness kind of subdues, like yeah. in the barrel. Like it's not as right. strong or yeah. uh, so. The mermaid goes away, right? Yeah, so to speak. Um, so when we get back, should we tell a story? We didn't do that. Hmm. We should do that. Yeah. What do you think about the adding water though? I, yeah, I liked it. I said it opened up. Opened yeah. It oh up yeah. A okay. Bit yeah. Yeah. Um, so when we get back, we may tell a story, and then talk about the man gear, and then we're gonna talk about do devotions tonight. Right? Devotions. That's right. right. We'll be right back. And, and Jesus. Is the intro and outro, guys? Is it as loud for you guys as it is for us on our headphones? Is it loud for you? It seems like it. Mine wasn't. Th mine was Your just wasn't? normal. Okay, so it must have been mine. Just mine. You mean turn your headphones up more? No. I like it at 11. Yeah, you do. You guys look great. If Adam can't See? feel the sound through his temples, yeah. it's like not the, loud enough like for him. I like the vibration him. in the ears. I think you are with hearing... The way I am, like the way I am with taste, like, like you just if it's if that flavor isn't <laughs> like jackhammering. I like that as taste though too. Like, if it's not jackhammering my tongue, it's not enough. Okay. You know. Well, we're getting uh, people who are saying they they think that we should do the story. So yeah, I saw that. So we will do. We will definitely do the story. If you didn't catch it last week, we told the story. Go back. We told the story on uh, when we called the cops at church. So. We called nine one one. Yeah, Poli the police. Yeah, I mean nine one one. I think is like a third party. One, so it's not the cops. This the the camera that you're on is is for when Dave is talking mainly. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware because we didn't we didn't go over that with you ahead of time. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you you knew. Mm -hmm. We go one two three. That's what they say. That's what they do in the biz, I guess. Is they in camera the, one, bro. In the biz, they go three, two, two one. one. Okay, that's fair enough. Come on. All right. Pretending like you know the biz. Well, it's all a joke. We're all Adam. just. No one takes this that seriously. I am the biz. You are the biz. The bees knees. I know a guy named Biz. Hey, did you like the candle that was in here? Did you like the smell? Like, did you catch that one? Mm -hmm. This candle is bomb. I really like this candle. Anyway, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let us Samwise forth. I was gonna say Sally forth, but I was like, no, come on. No, we're not doing Sally. I can do I can do better Samwise. Yeah. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan. Believe it or not, shocking. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me to You're my welcome. house. You're welcome. Yeah. 
Thanks for accepting my invitation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to come to your upstairs at an appointed time mm-hmm. and serve me whiskey. I how, appreciate. How, how do you guys like the whiskey shelves in the background? You like that? It looks pretty good. Yeah. I dig it. Can you change the colors on them? Do you I, got the remote? Oh, I don't have the remote on me, but that's okay. We'll do it later. That's Because we can do that. We can do it if we want to. Liturgi- we can go with the liturgical colors of the year. Totally. Okay, so new thing that we're doing, telling a ridiculous story. Yeah. Last time we told the story about when we called 911 at the church, Jim just commented on Facebook, and he said it was definitely the cops because he installed the system back then. I did. I didn't know. I, Jim, I, I did not know Mr. Spencer was in the payphone game. That was a good game to get out of at the right time. Payphones just kind of like, yeah, disappeared. I saw one the other day. You're like, wow. Yeah, look at that. I kind of want to use one. Okay, so tell. I did. So what I did want to jump know, in. Let me go make a phone call and take a selfie or something. <laughs> and then I realized I don't have any quarters. Yeah. Who has quarters? Can I Apple Pay this? No, I can't do that. Right. So. Yeah. So, uh, I thought we'd maybe tell a T-ball story. Okay. There were several T-ball stories. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about the one where uh, our our sisters were on the team. Yeah, I don't really remember if they were on. They must have. They probably were on this team with us. But, uh, one time. So Adam and I, we were uh, we were in in the field. I believe I was playing like second base, maybe okay. first base. Okay. I was on a base. Okay. And I just remember I'm standing there. You know, it's t ball. I, I don't really know what I'm doing. It's just the parents. They say, "Go stand here." If the ball, if the ball like comes by you at all, you kind of wa- you kind of watch it. And in T-ball, you hold the ball up, and it makes it, the play stop, if you remember. Yeah, okay. I, I, way, I had not. That way they don't from, sit there and throw the ball all from around. From anywhere? Yeah, if you catch it, you hold the ball up, they cannot advance. In Even in the outfield. Even in the outfield. You just hold it up. No mm-hmm. kidding. Okay, well, uh, I'm just, you know, standing out there because, you know, the parents tell you to stand there. Right. And I remember I looked over and saw you, mm-hmm. and I waved at you with my glove hand and as i'm sitting there waving i feel something like hit my hand and i look in the glove and there was a baseball in it (laughs) and so somebody had like hit a line drive thank god i wasn't standing you know like (laughs) Like, a foot to the left (laughs) because this this beautiful thing right here the money maker of the catholic man might it my whole life could have just gone downhill from t-ball on. You know, it's like that isn't that is peaking early, right? If that's if that's what's happening to you, but no, I I uh, I snatched a line drive right out of the sky <laughs> in T-ball, waving at me. I I would be willing <laughs> to say, willing to bet, I was the only kid who caught a line drive out or of- like a pop. You know, like got anybody out. Yeah, you know that that was probably the only kid all year who never made it to first base. And, and the dad was probably so mad that you caught that because the kid hit the ball really well. Right, yeah. Solid hit. Right, it was hard enough to where drive. it made it to me in right. the air. In the air. You know? And you're waving at me and accidentally caught the ball. And accidentally caught it. Yeah, because I didn't have my glove up other times. Right. You know, I'm just standing there with probably with it down at my side. Right, picking flowers Like looking at the, yeah, like, hmm, that's an interesting blade of grass. Right. Kicking the dirt or whatever. Yeah. That's good. So, yeah. That's good. Okay, man gear today. French press. The French press. Yeah. Uh, I have been using the French press quite a bit recently, because, and I realized... So we have an espresso maker. We got an espresso maker for, yeah. Yeah. Um, for Christmas. I bought right. one for so Haley. Right, so when you told me you were using your French press, I was kind of surprised because if it seems like if I had an espresso machine like you have... Mm-hmm. Why? Why else? Right, Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. At, at first, I was... Only about espresso. Yeah. You know, because uh, it, it's quick. It's on the go. You can do an Americana, which is great. Americana, yeah. I yeah. Mean, which is great. But I have found that as I'm working, I enjoy the sipping of coffee. Like, yeah. actually drinking coffee. And you can't really do that with espresso for very long. 
you'll, you'll run out very fast. Oh, right. Unless you, yeah, yeah. If, if you just drink an espresso, if you're just drinking right? Yeah. Espresso. So, I've Adam, been, I've been it doing just depends on, uh, you know, like, well, I've, tr- I've six gone, like, sh- I'll take a six tuplet shot I of espresso. I tried a six, a, a, a six double, or three double shot, which is yeah. six expre- espressos, and I got like a caffeine headache. Give me the octagon. So, yeah, the octagon. So, the French press is, is great for me because I, I like strong coffee. So, yeah. I can make it yeah, very, you very like, strong. You like gross coffee, like grossly strong. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Which surprises me. Really? You have such a refined palate. I well, I don't. Um, caffeine doesn't affect me too much, so. Right. I I, I don't know. I just like it. Yeah. What? You, sh- you should drink more coffee then, and not necessarily well, I don't want stronger to. I don't coffee. Wanna, I don't want to drink more. I drink a lot of coffee as is. So so, so ever since I, we've been you know working from home like most of the most of the country. And I have just been drinking a lot of coffee. I used to never drink coffee at home. I used to just drink it at the office, okay? And so I was a co- I've got a sweet coffee cup at the office. It's got uh, the Sacred Heart of Jesus on one side, the Immaculate Heart of Mary on the other side. And it's just, like, very cool. Uh, I get more compliments on this coffee cup than anything else. You know? And I have had more opportunities to evangelize just drinking coffee nice. uh, because of this cup. However, since I've been home, I left the coffee cup at my office, and so I've been drinking out of Yeti, cu- you know, mm-hmm. m- mugs. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Sure. I mean, it's like, I knew that. Right. I knew that. But it's like, I had forgotten how your coffee, Stays. hours, for at, like all day, it's still hot, mm-hmm. or at least drinkable. You know, it doesn't get that, it doesn't get cold. Right. I mean, for a long, long time. So man, that is really because I've been tiling, mm-hmm. you know, redoing my bathroom, and there's just something about working. Mm-hmm. Like you just need to drink something. Right. Really, tiling is the kind of job that you just want to drink a cheap beer. Right. But it's been Exodus ninety, and I haven't been able to do that. So I've been drinking a ton of coffee, which that's, that's usually I never it. drank coffee at at home. I just never made it at home. I never because I'm the only one who drinks coffee, so I just never bothered. But now with the French press, man, so, all the time. So I read online that the best way to, when you're grinding the coffee, you don't want it too coarse because it, it clogs the filters. You don't want it too fine because it'll seep through the filters. Well, and too and fine, it it will, too fine will kind of clog. Will clog the if it's too thick. Or if it's too coarse, you just won't get a. It won't get a nice strong brew uh you, you won't get the, the caffeine as much out of the the bean mm-hmm. you'll know when you go to press it if it's grinded too coarsely or too finely if it if it presses real easy you didn't grind you needed to grind more if it gets kind of hard to press that's because it's so fine that it has all of the pieces are clogging up the the filter i see you see what i mean yeah i, do. Uh, I really like it also because not 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 this kind because it has a, it, it's glass, but mo- a lot of French presses are uh, made out of stainless steel or some you know some kind of carbon steel. Yeah, and it's great for camping. It's the it's the best right. It's yeah, the best for way, camping. It's the best way to cook or to make coffee while camping. Yeah, I uh, I don't know if like it's just because I got one now. I'm noticing other French presses or if they're just kind of like going through a, a popular phase right now, especially with metal French presses because I've seen several. I like the glass because you can see how much you're pouring mm-hmm. a little bit better. I mean, you can see if it's metal, you can look into it, right? But I I like being able to being see. able to see into it, you know. Uh, but it can break. My dad broke, broke his, you know, shaking it, trying to dry it out, just slipped out of his hands, oh, yeah. shattered all over the sink. Nice. Um, right. But when you do the, I, I think that the the purists will tell you. You don't want to just pour the hot water in, okay? You know, because typically you pour in the hot water, let it sit for about four minutes, press it. Right, four minutes is about as long as you should take it. Yeah, and actually, it doesn't make a difference if you leave it in there longer. Well, the purist, co- the purist will say they will say that it does. Right. Um. So, but also some other coffee snobs will say no, it doesn't. Okay. Um. But if you want to just like really do the ceremony. You pour in just a little bit of water first for about a minute to let the coffee bloom. 
didn't even know that. Oh yeah, you got to bloom the bloom the coffee. So you pour in just enough to like get it wet, and it will kind of like expand, or rise. Yeah, right. like the coffee will kind of expand a little bit, and you do that for a minute, and then you pour in the rest of the coffee and let it sit for about three minutes. I'm doing it all wrong. What does it time. do? Absolutely nothing. Oh yeah, but That's the, the purists. I like the ceremonial who, things, Who though. pretend that it makes a difference in the flavor. Once again, like I said, I cannot tell a difference because we, ha- we are not approaching anywhere close to jackhammer level of differences in flavor. Okay. Right? Right. And that's, that's what it's going to take for me to really know. Like, oh, yeah, that is orange. Right. You know? <laughs> Went from grape to orange. Yep, I did notice that. How subtle. No. But that is what the purists will say um, about the French press. To, to If you really want to make the ceremony out of it, uh, the ceremony I think is nice, but sometimes you just want a cup of coffee. You know, and you don't, it's like, I would make a cup, but see, what I do there are I, so many things to do. See, what I do is I, I make a, a shot of espresso, drink that while I'm doing the French nice. press. Nice, right. So I'm always ready to get, like, already, already ready to go. Because you got to get a base. Right, it's all about the base is what I've been told. That's what some people say. Some people say it's all about that base. Yeah. Well, no more trouble. We'll get into devotions at the other side of this break. We'll be right back. Man, you'll take a sip of that whiskey... And it it'll it'll hang it'll hang with you for mm-hmm. several minutes. It's a long finish. It is a Have you long. It in your mouth? Yeah. Dude, I, when I squirted it, I was like. Oh. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Like it's got a a level of strength that's really hard to find with only wood. You know what I mean? Well, I was worried that the that because it was so dark of an amber color that the oloroso casks were going to overpower. Like it was going to be yeah. too sweet. Right. Um, and it's not. And it's not. Mm-mm. It's not even close. I mean, you can barely taste the, you know, a lot of times with the with the uh, Oloroso casks, you get the candied fruit. Yeah. The, the, you get a lot the of sugar, sugar, yeah, strawberry type of rhubarb type of flavors. Yeah. You know that that come out, um, dried raisins, you know, things like that. Uh, but it's very very subtle. Yeah, I agree. It's very good. I, how much? How much was it? Uh, so I think that it was about seventy-five bucks. Is that pre-tariff or at, or post-tariff pricing? I think it's post-tariff price. But but um, I did a little research uh, earlier today, and apparently, you can't really find these anymore. Yeah, that's uh, the way. That's the way it usually goes. It's it's not about the price. It's about finding it. Yeah, I don't understand. That's when because when I found it, I was like, wait a minute. I haven't seen it because last year's uh, uh, Cartes, Carches, Carches, Carches uh, was a complete disappointment, and I I thought it had it was in that wine barrel. It, remember, it was the purple label? Mm, um, yeah, I do. Um, and it was like it was a, just a disappointment. Like it wasn't that good. It wasn't even as good as the Lafroig Ten. You know, it wasn't. Well, I'll be honest. I don't think any of them are as good as the Lafroig Ten. Well, I like yeah the Lafroig. I think Lafroig Ten is the best one that they make. And I always get excited to try like these new ones, but I don't think they're ever as good. I w- I still would say nope. I would choose the ten over over this is over whatever this is, it is. Um, more complex. Than definitely, the 10, definitely, it's more complex. But it's not as um, got a warmer flavor. You know, it's like there's definitely a lot more flavors going on. Right. I just think the ten is just so nice. To is punch. it's it's right. a a it's thing a, of just beauty. Such a great punch in the face. Right. Pow, right in the kisser. Right right in the kisser. And it's just, it's elegant, beautiful, delicious. Lefroig 10. That is a commercial. (laughs) (laughs) We were really, like, I really wish we were getting paid by Lefroig 10. All right, let's keep going, Juan. Sorry. We should. Father uh, Father Brian Ketterer is drinking Lefroig Triple Wood along with us in solidarity. So I think that I think the Lefroy Triple Wood isn't as good as this one though. No, I I agree. This one is better than the Triple Wood. And I don't know if it's because I don't remember what the uh ABV is on the Triple Wood, but this one because it is so strong it lasts longer.
Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. We're going to talk about devotions today, which really all boils back down to Jesus. Jesus. That is what we talk about here on the Catholic Man Show. Yeah. Or we at least attempt to mm-hmm. every episode. Yeah. I think that we've we've done a pretty good job of that. Yeah, sometimes it's good incognito. Going. Incognito Jesus. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. And he started that. Yeah, he did. Totally, he started incognito Jesus. Hashtag incognito Jesus. Mm-hmm. You right. know, yeah, because you know, they, After you know, that one 12, time, like the road to Emmaus. Yeah, like he got lost, and and he was like, just was like, listen, don't do that, don't do that again. And Mary was, don't do. Oh that yeah, again. yeah, yeah. He started it then, but I was thinking like the road to Emmaus. He's chilling, you know, with some of his apostles, and, and they don't even just, recognize him. They don't even recognize him. Yeah. Well, from from twelve on, he went incognito. For all of all of humanity, you know, all of right, yeah, really, like the whole time he was for, like, you were God <laughs> the whole time for eighteen years. No one knew what you were doing, basically. Right from twelve to thirty. Yeah, yeah. So, hashtag. You never know what he's you. what he's doing. What's, back, what is he doing what's over he there? doing back there? He's making a table. That is a nice it's a, table. It's a tall table. It's never going to catch on. <laughs> uh, all right, so so we're going to talk about the briefly person. though. I did want to ask you about Exodus ninety. Oh, okay. We finished Exodus 90. You know, it's kind of a devotion to it. Uh, It's like a devotion of asceticism, prayer, you know. Fraternity. Freeing yourself. Sure. Uh, Just, uh, I don't want you to explain because I know there's too much. Mm -hmm. So I would like you to sum up. Exodus 90 as a whole? No, just like your experience. You know, like, what are your thoughts? It was, it was a good, it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I did it. I needed the time to, uh, focus on prayer more so that was a, a really good thing the beautiful thing that we have going on right now though dave is that the things that excess 90 provides uh you and i have been and juan have been very benef- like we, we've benefited from the fraternity part uh, and the men's group part so mm-hmm. it was a it was a great extension of what we're already doing yeah um we already have the men's groups which is the fraternity part we already have a, a Tuesday morning prayer group kind of thing. So we have a lot of that stuff, but it was nice to to have a more regimented daily thing yeah. uh, to go off of. I stand here. I, mean, I was. I remember uh, it was midnight on uh, Holy Saturday. It was technically it's Easter morning. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I could have candy, and I said, no, I don't. I don't need to. Don't even, don't even really want to. Mm-hmm. And I realized I stood there at that moment with a strength that I had not possessed before. You know, just uh, a mastery of my appetites, not like they're completely mastered at all, but... Um, but I, in all, all humility, they're the, pretty close. Some of them were harnessed big time. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I was holding the leash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was really great. I don't think... I don't know how... If you are doing excess 90 and you don't lose weight... I lost 15 you're, pounds. You're not, you're not doing it right. I because am the skinniest I've ever been. You, I mean, stop eating as a man. Meal, in between meals. You're exercising. You're, you're cutting out all sweets, all alcohol. So yeah. if you're not losing weight in excess ninety. You're doing something wrong. I agree. Okay. Or or you were just shredded, just ripped. Yeah, you just had no body fat beforehand. So right. anyway, um, I just wanted to you know see how it went. What, the what hardest part for me. The hardest part was only giving up one thing on Sundays for me. Yeah. Because I felt like, no, Sundays, Sundays, like, I deserve this. Mm -hmm. You know, I've worked so hard the six days. I deserve more than just one, like, relaxing one of the asceticisms. Yeah. Yeah, see, so um, I I didn't relax anything. I stopped relaxing disciplines on Sunday there at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, But still, I felt like Sunday was still a a really good day um, because I had doing other things to make sure I wasn't working on Sunday. Um, and so like, I'm not tiling the bathroom today. Right. Uh, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm not doing anything today. And so I, what I learned was that, um, that leisure and that, uh, that attitude of Sunday is primarily interior, that there is an exterior and an outward reflection, you know, that your, a- your actions and behavior should be different, but that I had like this interior leisure on Sunday that wasn't present in other days. And it wasn't because I was relaxing disciplines. 
Mm-hmm. I was still fasting. I was still, you know, abstaining and all those things. But it was still, Sunday was still different. Nice. Yeah. So that's, that's what I learned about that. I think all men should at least do it one time. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I want to talk about devotions. Um, and there's a, one devotion in particular that we're going to talk about today. It's a devotion popularized by St. Bridget of Sweden. She was a mystic. Sweden. Sweden. Okay. Sweden. She had blonde hair. Okay. okay. Blue eyes? She's from Sweden. I don't know. Okay. In this picture, she's her eyes, her eyes are downcast. Okay. She looks. She, I'm not Phenol- gonna lie, dude. Humility. She looks rough in this picture. Well, like you gotta talk to David Williams about that. That is not good. I don't know if you can see this. The lighting won't. Okay. That's kind of far away. Anyway, um, so she. Uh, we're gonna talk about devotions in general first before getting into that. Or? No, no, we're gonna talk about this devotion, okay? Because we're right here. Easter just happened. Mm-hmm. Um, the Christ has offered his passion. He's offered his his body, blood, soul, divinity on the cross and throughout all of the other stations of his passion. Um, and now he stands in heaven eternally offering himself in that way to the Father. Okay. In, the, in the Revelation, book of Revelation, John saw a vision of him as a lamb standing as though slain, you know, with his... Right. Arms out like on a cross. So um, Christ perpetually offers himself to the Father. And so one of, I think, a very, very powerful prayer that we can do is we can now offer Christ to the Father for ourselves and for our community. When I first encountered this, it was in the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Just this idea, this notion. And it, I remember kind of being uneasy about doing that. Did you ever feel that way? The Divine Mercy Chaplet? When you say, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for my sins and for those of the whole world. Like, I remember thinking, who am I? How can I? How am I offering something that's not my own? Oh, I see what you're saying. How can I offer? I'm not a priest. You know, like, it's not my blood. How am I offering it? And I think a lot, and it's a common, common question when about the, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And the, the devotion we're talking about today, this uh, these seven prayers of St. Bridget, are very similar. Okay, so just to address that briefly, um, there are two ways. The first way is that we are, we participate as the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. So in as much as we are the body of Christ, we're offering our own body. Okay, so because that's the, that's the thing, how can we offer something that's not our own? The second thing is that we are certainly the church, and Christ espoused, espoused himself on the cross to the church. Now, your body belongs to your spouse. My, my body, my wife has spiritual authority over my body because I have given it to her. It is now her body, and her body belongs to me. So in marriage, there is this mutual self-gift. It's like a covenant or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. So, it's not a contract. No, exactly. So Christ like, espoused himself on. to us, the church, on the cross. So for there, from that standpoint also, we have the authority, the right, the ability to offer the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to the Father. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, what these St. Bridget prayers do is they go through the seven times that Christ spilled his blood. And you offer up that to the to the to the Father. So the seven times are the circumcision. Um, oh yeah. Uh, which you know, it's like right off the bat. He started eight, his eight life. Days. He started his life off, offering his blood. Um, the suffering on the Mount of Olives. The flogging, the crowning with thorns, the carrying of the cross, the crucifixion, and the piercing of his side. Um. There is another very probably more popular devotion of St. Bridget. Um, So like I said, she was a mystic and she received these private revelations from Jesus where he was asking her to popularize these prayers. So the other one I think is more, more common because it only takes a year to do these seven year, these seven prayers that we're going to talk about today take 12 years to finish. Okay. Um, The one year continuously, you can't stop. Yeah, for 12 years. For 12 years. Without ceasing. Without ceasing. Yeah. The one-year prayers, you say 15 Hail Marys and 15 Our Fathers every day for a year. And at the end of that, um, she 
it was revealed to her that the Lord had like 5,400 so many wounds throughout his passion. And so you would have said, and our father, you would have, you would have honored each and every wound throughout that one year. Nice. Okay. Okay. Um, that's a little bit different from the 12 year prayers. The 12 year prayers I want to talk about because what you're doing is you're taking the suffering of Christ and very intentionally and very specifically offering up that particular uh, suffering for specific graces in your own life. Okay, so um, for instance, the circumcision. Uh, uh, I offer you the, bu- the, the first wounds, the first pains, and the first bloodshed as atonement for my and all of humanity's sins of youth, as protection against the first mortal sin especially among my children and relatives. When I read that, I was like, man, what a great thing to pray. Exactly. Like, like to the protection of the first against mortal my, sin. The first mortal sin for my children, you know, like protect them against that first yeah, mortal what sin. What a great thing to pray. These prayers are some of I would have never the, thought of that. Oh, oh me either. Uh, and also it's because I'm just not that holy. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm just not, I'm not woke, spiritually woke enough to like. Do you, should you be? I don't know. You know, I get confused don't, about woke. Don't. I don't know, dude. I, I, it I think seems like that seems like changing the definitions of they woke. They change it, I know. But it seems like the mystics were pretty woke. You know what I'm saying? Like they were aware they were they were aware of stuff. They were awake. Yeah, they were awake. Forget woke. They were just awake. Yeah, we don't even say that anymore now. What are you five seconds ago? <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can just keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, is there anything on Facebook? Are you just going to talk about that one devotion, or are you going to go into more? Nope, we're just going to talk about this one. Okay. So we got plenty of time. Because there's a lot to actually go over with this devotion, to be honest. Don't. I thought you were about to. I thought you were. I just saw it. It's no, just was, coming, and I was like, don't do that. No. I was just counting down. <laughs> Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. All right, so we're talking about uh, some of these prayers of St. Bridget. These are the seven prayers of St. Bridget, not the 15 prayers of St. Bridget. I don't really know much about the 15 prayers of St. Bridget, okay? So we're talking about the seven prayers of St. Bridget. It takes 12 years to do them. We just talked about the circumcision. Um, the next one, and so I, I didn't tell you, you say in Our Father and a Hail Mary for each one. So you say Our Father, Hail Mary, then you say that prayer for the circumcision. Our Father, Hail Mary, then you say the prayer for the next one. You don't have to do it in that order. You can say seven Our Fathers, seven Hail Marys, whatever. You don't have to do them all in order, right? Combo it up the way you like. Yeah, exactly. You know, you do you. Well, that is a slippery slope. In as much as it is within the rubrics of the stuff. Okay. Things. Duh. Right. Okay, so then the next one is Suffering on the Mount of Olives. So, um... They all start the same way. Each one of these prayers, they say, Eternal Father, through Mary's unblemished hands and the divine heart of Jesus, I offer you blank. So in this case, it's the terrifying suffering of Jesus' heart on the Mount of Olives and every drop of his bloody sweat as atonement for my and all of humanity's sins of the heart, as protection against such sins and for the spreading of divine and brotherly love. Um, so you know, here we are offering it up for spreading of divine and brotherly love. Um, and each one is specific. When, when you think about it, sins of the heart. You know, um, here at Jesus is at the, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, suffering emotional anguish. Yeah, oh, man. It, watching the Passion on, on Friday, I was just like... Right. The, the, the agony of the Garden, and whenever he looks at Mary and say, I make all things new as he lifts up the cross, yeah. are the two spots where I... Fight tears. Yeah. Even though the I make all things new is not, not really in the passion narrative, it's a very nice um, artistic touch. Uh, and it's biblical. Yeah. No, he, yeah, he, exactly. It's something that he does. 
and something that he might have said to Mary. We don't know. So anyway, but I do like that part. Mm -hmm. Um, But the suffering in the garden, I think, can really best be an, uh, an analogy would be like if your spouse is cheating on you, you know, and you know it or something. And it's happening right now. You know, that's the kind of suffering, this emotional torment. Um, you know, the church was was cheating on him. Right. I mean, and over and over in the Old Testament, that's the analogy that God uses for the unfaithfulness of the Israelites, mm-hmm. the Hebrews, um, about how I espouse myself to you and you were unfaithful. Um, so here we are in this prayer, praying for d- uh, divine and brotherly love that. Uh, people might have true friendship and not any motivated by anything else, you know? Which is much needed. Yeah, exactly. In this day and age. So well, let's just try to go through the others because there's some other stuff we want to okay. get to. Crowning with thorns. Um, you offer uh, wounds, pains, and the precious blood of Jesus' holy head from the crowning with thorns and atonement for my and all of humanity's sins of the Spirit as protection against such sins and for the spreading of Christ's kingdom here on earth. Good. Um, the carrying of the cross. Uh, I offer you the sufferings in the way of the cross, especially his holy wound on his shoulder and all of its precious blood as atonement for all of humanity's rebellion against the cross. Every grumbling against your holy arrangements and all other sins of the tongue as protection against such sins and for true love of the cross. How like, right in the kiss these, right the reason I bring this up is because these prayers are so intentional and so specific that like they like help me in this way. That is a and very ten of prayer yeah, right there. And very right in the kisser. Very relevant prayers. Um, finally, the crucifixion. Um, and this one I, I like too. I offer you your son on the cross, his nailing, his raising, his wounds in the hands and feet, and the three streams of his precious blood that poured forth from these for us, his extreme tortures of the body and soul, his precious death, and its non bleeding renewal in all holy masses on earth as atonement for all wounds against vows and regulations within the orders, as reparation for my and all of the world's sins, for the sick and the dying, for all holy priests and laymen, for the Holy Father's intentions towards the restoration of Christian families, for the strengthening of faith, for our country, and for unity among all nations in Christ and his church, as well as for the diaspora. The diaspora is the the Jews, essentially, the Jewish people of today. And then finally, the piercing of Jesus' side. I offer you... um, uh, for the needs of the Holy Church and, and his atonement for the sins of all mankind, the precious blood and water which poured forth from the wound of Jesus' divine heart, be gracious and merciful towards us. Blood of Christ, the last precious content of his holy heart, wash me of all my and others' guilt of sin. Water from the side of Christ, wash me clean of all punishment for sin and extinguish the flames of purgatory for me and for all of the poor souls. Amen. And so you're done. It takes about five minutes to do. Um, there are, i got to get to this, there are promises that are associated with this the promises are not are not approved by the church um it is the the promises are of unknown dubious origin it it is believed that um they were added on years later so they're nowhere in saint bridget's writing do these promises appear jesus does not tell her these are the promises. At least she did not write that this is the right. Case. Exactly, she didn't write it down, and it seems like the kind of thing that she would have written down. Okay, I only bring it up because if you look up this devotion, you will certainly find these promises because they are rather extreme. They promise some big things here. So they promise that the soul who prays these prayers will not suffer purgatory. The soul who prays them will be accepted among the martyrs as though he had spilled all of his blood for the faith. The soul who prays wow. them can choose three other people whom Jesus will keep in a state of grace sufficient to become holy. And no one in the four successive generations of that soul who prays them will be lost. The soul who prays them will be made conscious of his death one month in advance. So some, anytime that there's specific, like that specific of promises on prayers, it makes me like, it just, it's not that I don't believe that that could happen. It's just, man, that, that kind of, rubs me a weird way well and the there the problematic ones are that you can pick three people to be kept in a state uh what's it say choose three people whom jesus will keep in a state of grace sufficient to become holy like oh yeah just pick anybody just pick three people yeah uh, that's kind of problematic and that no one in four successive generations of the soul who prays them will be lost so like your kids grandkids great grandkids and great great grandkids 
we'll all go to heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's a big thing. That's a big prayer. And I will tell you, these promises are a big motivating factor in why I started these prayers. I've so I'm six and a half years in to my, these. My dad's done it. He finished. Uh, he finished. Yeah. He did them. Um, but I remember starting saying, even if these promises are totally bogus, the prayers themselves are so beautiful. Oh, because they are, um, the prayers are approved by the church. Um, two popes have approved. Uh, the actual prayer. Not the promises, but the prayers. The prayers. Um, okay. And I, I'm surprised it doesn't say here on this website, because it, it says on almost, who the top, it's like Pope Clement and Pope Pius the Ninth, I think. It would Pope be one Clement of the Pius's. The, Pope right. Pi- the, the Pius's are... So, so the prayers themselves are approved by the church. The promises came along later, okay? And there are still, though, many people who believe firmly in the promises, yeah, of, of, sure. in the promises of these prayers. But, you know, it's, this is all private revelation anyway. Right. The prayers themselves, there's nothing really private revelation about it. Um, the only private revelation would be that Jesus was coming to St. Bridget saying... I desire for people to honor the wounds of my passion. And so that's what you're doing. Okay. Um, and you're using, I mean, like, why did Christ allow himself to be flogged? You know, if he just needed to offer his life for hours, then the, the crucifixion would have been enough. But no, he wasn't. He chose to suffer uh, in the garden at the, uh, you know, at the, at the pillar, mm-hmm. um, with the crown of the, he chose to suffer all these things. And it does seem Almost like he's making atonement for speci- like uh, the flogging. It seems like he's making atonement for the sins of the flesh. Right. Oh, I will offer my flesh to you. Here's you know like a pound of f- flesh. You know like it seems when you meditate on them like like he was being specific and intentional in the way he was choosing to suffer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that we can offer those to the Father in this way, which is so specific. Um, just to me, these prayers will, they're designed to advance your, uh, spiritual life because you're asking for specific graces to protect me from these specific things that, you know, humanity suffers from. Mm-hmm. And, you know, devotions in themselves are just, are, are just an act of faith. You know, that they're a, mm-hmm. a walking in faith, you know, you're, you're 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 growing in the virtue of faith, the, you know the uh, theological virtue of faith. You know, you give which is a good one, which is a really good one to have. You know, yeah. you're opening yourself up to receive the graces that God, you know, wants to give you um, to 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 have uh, th- this theological faith. Because you know, even if you're sitting there thinking like, oh, I don't know, I, I don't know about these promises. You know, even. When you're burning, don't it. don't do it because of the promises. Don't do it because do no. it do it because the prayers themselves are efficacious. Right, and, and it's just this act of faith of, of continually going back towards God and, and in a beautiful way, in a very a beautiful way, yeah, in specific way. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, and I just thought that this is a good time here. You know, now that in Easter Christ has just offered His passion, mm-hmm. so now um, as we're coming up on Divine Mercy Sunday, you know the the Divine Mercy Chaplet is all about offering the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Um, this is another way of doing that. Um, it's from it's the, a great compliment it's to from, the Divine Mercy. I, I, I think that she was from... So she lived in... Uh, the 14th century? Yes, the 14th century. So the 1500s. Um, so this is a very old, old prayer. This is older than Protestantism. Maybe. It's close anyway. Over oh, 500 years close. Yeah, yeah, it's over 500 years old. So. All right, man. Well, good job. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He Hallelujah. Is, he is risen. We are the Easter people. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. And cheers to Jesus. New Easter season, new studio, new intro. New Lafroig. The more I drink this, the more I'm really liking it. Yeah. I'm... And the water. The water made a huge difference. I agree. Yeah, I actually enjoy... I very rarely enjoy putting water in my whiskey and liking it more. But this one I definitely did. And 
you're not giving up a lot at almost 60 percent abv you know what I mean? right like, yeah yeah that's a that's a lot mm -hmm. so i mean i yeah i think it was uh, I, I think it's a really good whiskey i did too i'm excited to put it on the whiskey shelf people are asking for a 360 studio tour studio tour. uh we will do that next week because this week we're still not quite uh it's not we still have a couple one main addition we would like to make right a so key, it's a key piece it's a key piece it's a key piece so it's a piece next that's week, key we will try to do a 360 tour and plus it's not all cleaned up ready to be showcased in that's what it, this is more authentic this is what this it usually is, looks like yeah exactly <laughs> Uh huh. There's a space there, just some people. Nice. Well, yeah. Almost like we did that on purpose. Like almost like we did that on purpose. No, you know what it is. It is that. Yeah. So. Awesome. Thanks sweet. for the content you provide. You are welcome, El, Daryl. El sweet. Daryl Margo is on. Kathy is on. Lance Rose on. Michael, Michael, what's up, man? That's ca that's Spanish for the sweet. This El sweet. El sweet. Oh man. Yeah. Father Ketterer was on for a little while. Indeed. That's how I knew he was drinking the triple wood. So I'm looking enough. Scott Shields is on. He or he was on at least. Yeah, he agreed that the Lafroy tin is best. It's just tough to beat it. It is. Uh, non-essential gym is on. Ooh, non-essential gym. Actually, Jim, I really would like you to come next week, maybe if you could, because people are people are trying to get in, you know, Jim, and we need and you to keep them out. And so. I have like things I need to be giving you. So you are essential, and I would like you to be here next week if possible. Is it my? Oh, it's my turn next week. It's your turn. Okay, I'll have to try to figure something out. We need to, to reach out to Father, Father Hollowell. He's doing well. By I the mean, way. Callaway. Callaway. I always get them confused all the time. Callaway, Hollowell. We need to reach out to him. I agree. I like, I'm a big fan of his. In fact, I interviewed him, and the Patreon members got the uh, Patreon interview that I did with him. Let me just say this. Under no circumstances should in an allrecipes.com account, okay? Don't don't do that. They might have a lot of good recipes, but... Did you just... What happened? It stopped unexpectedly. Oh. Huh. Well, I'm glad it happened now. Yeah. They will not... Leave you alone? Let you unsubscribe. I have unsubscribed no less than five times. Every day, I'm getting like five emails from these people. I like whenever it says, this may take seven to ten business days for you, before you... Right. Uh, you know, it's like... That's what I oh uh, and it's like you know what that's a bunch of bull crap right I know that's not because computers right I know yeah that's I not even true. waited like all right well maybe maybe it'll take a day you know like they do it maybe they pull a batch of the list every day and they send emails to you that day right you know but when I signed up for the account I said don't send me stuff and they did it anyway and then I get immediately get these all these emails and I go to unsubscribe and there's like ten. First of all, there were like 30 different things you could subscribe to as far as how many emails you want to get from these people. And I was still subscribed to like 10 of them. Hmm. Don't do it. The this word. is what you get, allrecipes.com, okay? Just because I wanted to save one pancake recipe. That's it. I just didn't want to have to search for this pancake recipe it's every time. It screenshot it no and then i have to like like no, just scroll th scroll nope, through my just save it to a folder and boom i don't want to do that okay well then you get get 50 emails a day i can because i wanted to be able to say okay google pull up my pancake recipe thank you tyler that our uh, video quality is on point new cameras new cameras yeah all right we're good one el juan